just like to acknowledge that the world of gospel music is already changing. Every year, new black composers are being rediscovered and performed uh, around the world. And the new up and coming composers of color are being recognized around the world. Um, however, I do feel that gospel music education is lacking behind the improvements. Um, I've been here for five years, and most of my education has been about straight white men. Um, we know everybody, everybody knows Mozart, Beethoven, Bach, Beethoven, Rachmaninoff, Haydn, um, Dvorak, just to name a few. My second year, I decided to do research on my own because I knew there had to be more to history than just what I was being taught. Through my own research, I discovered multiple black composers who um, had been recently rediscovered and who are now being more known, but I was still confused as to why I wasn't being taught. I had to research by myself. Um, one of the composers I had found, William Grant Still, I took one of his pieces and I said, this is going to be my next challenge. However, when I brought it, uh, I was told that I had to complete the standard repertoire of music before I could do anything of that level. So I was confused because I was shown the list of a standard repertoire and it was all the same composers I had listed earlier. So I wanted to know what made a piece standard enough to be in the standard repertoire and why. Um, we all know the general reason why, but I wanted to get into the real reason, the reason that many professors here um, did not have the ability to tell me. So I've been here, for, like I said, I've been here for five years and I've taken many classes through different departments, um, including the African American Studies Department. There, I took a class where we learned about a uh, German philosopher, George Wilhelm Friedrich Hegel, um, and, his, uh, and we read some of his lectures on the philosophy of history. Now, this is still centuries ago. Hegel was late 18th, early 19th century, um, and a lot of his views are still relevant, and a lot of them are still irrelevant. He is known as the father, as one of the fathers of modern philosophy, but he is also known as one of the fathers of modern racism. In his lectures on the philosophy of history, specifically his lecture on Africa, Hegel claims that Africans lacked the evolution necessary to be conscious. They lacked the ability to process certain concepts that Hegel believed um, made humans civilized. According to Hegel, because Africans lack this consciousness, specifically the ability to understand religion and God, then they were deemed less than human, merely a thing. Um, Hegel goes on to explain that if Africans were allowed to interact with anything, then they would taint it with their unholiness, with their dirtiness. Anything that Africans touched would be considered lesser than now. So this explains why Africans were kept out of classical music for so long. In, in the mid 20th century, 1940, Anthony Dvorak, he traveled to the United States. He became one of the professors at the College of Music in New York. Um, Dvorak was a huge advocate for using folk music in current compositions. He, one of his most famous pieces, his Slavonic dances, reached into the Hungarian folk music to, uh, for inspiration. Now, with, uh, after being in the Americas, Dvorak wanted to look into new folk music to use for inspiration. He, used many, he wrote many articles um, explaining why American composers needed to reach into their history and use the folk music of America and their new compositions to come up with a new age of composition. Um, Dvorak explicitly stated that Native American folk music and Black American folk music needed to be studied and incorporated for this new um, age of classical music. You can imagine the backlash that this received. Many white composers were reluctant to involve um, Black Americans or Native Americans into their compositions, deeming the genre, once again, dirty and dainty. But there were some composers who, maybe not directly, but still took the Vortex words to heart. Uh, Florence Price, for example, um, in every piece that I have researched for her, her first movement has been a juba. A juba is a dance popular, um, popularized through um, Black Americans enslaved. The 
the historical reasoning behind that, the, when enslaved Africans came to the Americas, uh, they brought their own traditions, including um, West African talking drums. Those talking drums were used for um, religious purposes, celebratory purposes, and general dancing. The talking drums were also used because of the pitch that it made to communicate between plantations. So when slave owners, found, slave owners found out that the talking drums were being used for slaves to communicate with each other, they banned the drums altogether, took away their instruments. So to make up for the fact that we didn't have any instruments, um, enslaved Africans used the juba, a very rhythmic, high energy, um, a lot of body slapping, to keep their um, religious dances and their celebrations alive. You can understand why music like Florence Price's was lost, conveniently lost through history because of this tainted view that many people now saw of the genre. It was easier to just ignore these pieces, ignore these composers, instead of dealing with their own racism. Like I said earlier, the world of classical music is already changing, and I see it here at the department. Many professors are incorporating more diverse composers, many diverse um, musicians into their teachings. Professor Grimes um, always incorporates a um, people of color and woman in whenever she teaches the history course. Professor Ku encourages students to reach out to um, do their own research and find composers of color who are ready to perform and encourages students to perform new pieces by composers of color. And Dr. Phillips, though he's still new, still manages to incorporate composers of color in every um, symphonic concert that we have. Now, while these changes are great and I love to see it, I still think more can be done to support to support up and coming um, musicians of color coming in, coming here for education. I have been, like I said, third time now. I've been at UCI for five years. My first year I came, I, was, I could count all the black students in the music department on two hands, and it's only gotten smaller. I have been the only classical violinist here, classical musician here, classical instrumental musician here since my first year. Um, and to be completely honest, I felt like I didn't belong when I first came. I felt a major um, sense of imposter syndrome. And it didn't help that some of the experiences I went through here almost forced me to leave. My first year I entered, there was another violinist who would talk negatively behind my back to majors and non-majors. Though I was already feeling uncomfortable with my playing abilities, she still had the audacity to say that I was the worst performer in the department and say that I never practiced. I also spoke with a grad student who was surprised that I was here. She said, Moses, you should be in LA performing. Like, why are you here at school and spending all this money? And in my head, I was like, okay, well, I'm here. I want to you know, learn professionally from a real violinist. I want to learn from the symphony conductor. The faculty were great. I was excited. But uh, over time, I took her words more and more to heart, and I really considered leaving. I didn't go because of one story in particular. My first year, we had, I was in the, my first year, first quarter, I was in the symphony. I was in the second chair, second violin. And towards the end of the first quarter, we were rehearsing with the soloist, Professor Ku. She was performing um, a Tchaikovsky solo. And I know she sounded amazing, sounded beautiful. And I just felt like I wasn't, good enough to be there, even in her presence. Um, after the rehearsal had ended, I was packing up my bag, and Professor Ku came up to me, I don't know if she remembers this, but she came up to me and she said, Moses, I'm so excited you're here. I'm so excited to work with you. It's gonna be a good year. And I was surprised. I didn't think she remembered my name. I, it made me feel good that a professor, that a performer at her level wanted me here. It solidified my stance, but I belong here. And I think that's the type of care that all professors should try to show with students of color, specifically minority students in institutions like this. Um, you never know what somebody's going through. You never know 
what they may be thinking about. So just be empathetic. All right, thank you. So before she like kicks us off the stage, I am going to transfer <laughs> to part two, the performance by um, Keanu George Taylor, his ballad in C minor uh, for violin and piano. Um, Samuel George Taylor was born in his face remember program, I forgot the exact day, but it was late 18th century, or I'm sorry, late 19th century, um, to a English woman mother and a Sierra Leone father. His father moved back to Sierra Leone before he knew he had a child on the way, so still grew up, or I'm sorry, Taylor grew up without um, his father in his life. He was raised by his mother and his mother's extended family. Taylor was originally taught violin by his grandfather, who also helped him go to school for music, where he switched from violin to composition. Um, Taylor composed this piece in 1907 and dedicated it to a Russian violinist, a dear friend of his, Mikhail Zakharovich. After the piece was originally um, performed, and because of the feedback it had received, um, Taylor rearranged it for violin and piano so he and Sakarevich could travel the world playing it. Um, the piece is very Slavic in feel, probably because of who it was dedicated to, and has themes reminiscent of Rachmaninoff. Um, it is has a it has a rhapsodic form with multiple tempo changes throughout the piece, each of which leading up to a grand finale and a exciting and energetic coda. So the performing with me today is going to be Isabel Powell. Please give us a second to grab my instrument. <laughs> <laughs> 